All right, welcome back guys. Today we're gonna to have like a pseudo guide slash top 10 video. And today we're gonna to talk about the 10 best three star free to play units in the game. And this is kind of an idea given to me by someone on my discord, which you should join if you haven't already. But today we're gonna to talk about three main topics. Number one, what are the advantages of three star units? Because some people might just think three stars are by default worse than any five star. Number two, are three star units viable in end game content, including PVE and PVP? And number three, we'll go over that top 10 list and a handful of honorable mentions. So let's get started. So topic number one is what are the advantages of three star units? Well, first of all, obviously, they're much easier to get than five-star units. Um, you're pretty much going to have every st three-star unit in the game in like six months if you play regularly. So that's the main perk. But the other massive perk to three-star units is this. It's the fact that their skills do not require any Molagora. If you watch any Epic 7 YouTuber out there, you'll see all of them crying about Molagora. Because at the top tier, you have to have your units max mola, at least the important bruiser ones, or they're not viable. Those extra damage mods and cooldown reductions are so key for making them viable in endgame PvP. But for specialty change units, you are not time gated by Molagoras, so you can unlock that character's full potential right away. Whereas with something like a five star unit, you need almost like two months of saving Molagoras to plus 15 a five-star unit and really use them to their full potential. So if you are already out of Molagoras and you want to build new heroes, but you know you can't invest in them, the best thing you can do is invest in key three-star units because you can max them out right away. All you have to do is farm the catalysts and use them to their maximum potential. And I'll tell you right now that a plus 15 three star will wipe the floor with a plus zero five star any day of the week. So that's the main advantage of three star units. Let's move on to the next topic. All right, now topic number two is, are three star units viable at the top tier in both PVE and PVP? Because I know a lot of you guys out there are perfectionists and you don't wanna bother investing in a unit if it's only going to carry you to the end game, but then it's not actually usable in the end game. Well, my answer to that is do not worry about it. Many of these three star units are absolutely viable all the way into the end game. This is my Wyvern 13 team. You'll notice it has three three star units in it, and some of them are best in class. So these units are absolutely viable in the end game. My raid team, I don't always use this one, but you'll notice this one also has three three-star units. Adventurer Raz, Commander Lorena, Angelic Montmorency, and Angelic Montmorency is considered best in class for a lot of PvE content. In PvP, many of these three-star units are also very viable. Adventurer Raz in particular shows up quite often in high champion and legend RTA PvP. So absolutely, you do not have to regret investing into three-star units. And even if you do, the only thing you lost, like I said, are catalysts and time. Because since they don't require any Molagoras, you don't lose out on any time-gated resources the way you do if you invest in a useless five-star and you can never get those Molas back. So I think that's the only stuff I wanted to talk about before we go over the top 10 list. So let's get into the top 10 list now. All right, so let's get into that top 10 list. Before we start, my disclaimer is these are my opinions, obviously, although I think most top players would agree with me. I'm sure some of these heroes have niche use cases, but I'm talking about general purpose. Are these heroes good without putting them into some meme team like a Gunther Lilius Cleave? So first, let's go over some really quick honorable mentions that didn't quite make the top 10, but I think they do still need to be discussed because I feel like these are some heroes that people will say, why didn't they get into top 10? So Judith is very good. Her base speed is pretty damn high, 117, and I think she gets some from Awakenings. So she's a great budget CR pusher in PvP. Helga is also great because she gives an attack buff. She doesn't really do anything else. She does have that specialty change now. The main advantage to Helga is that she has a speed imprint. 
so she reduces the speed requirement for budget cleave teams. Another one that does show up periodically is Celeste. Um, she's extremely fast, so she's a great initiator. 128 base speed, which makes her as fast as Cameron, the fastest character in the game. So um, her main weakness is she doesn't work unless you have C-Dom. But if you have C-Dom, it's a great way to boost your team. And finally, my main man, where is he? Um, this guy is still periodically used, I guess, in PvP. But um, he is a great budget Basar. And in some cases, like he decreases uh, enemy healing and he turn cuts if you use non-attack skills. So he is um, very, very usable still. So I would say those are my four honorable mentions. Now let's get into the top 10. So number 10, if I can ever find these heroes, is Lena. So where is she? So um, Lena is um, not that guy, this guy, or woman, I guess. <laughs> She's uh, the scary looking, I guess, waifu, is one of the best dog walkers in the game. So she is actually extremely strong because um, she has a self-attack buff, but the most important thing about Lena is when an enemy is defeated with the skill, cooldown does not occur. So it's kind of like Arbiter Vildred's S3, where she can just spam it over and over. Lena is a top, top tier dog walker. Really her only weakness is that she's ice elemental. So on like grass level, she'll probably miss and screw it up. But other than that, a very solid three-star unit for PVE useless in pvp so I, like i said this, this is general purpose it's not tailored towards pvp or pvp specifically i'm just saying heroes that you can use to progress number nine this is a hero that many of you are going to know very well and have probably used already um Kyrus. now Kyrus is useless in pvp but actually she's in some meme teams in pvp but in general she's useless but in PvE, she is an absolute god. Now, in Abyss, if you've ever watched any Abyss guide video, you'll see a lot of them where they say just Kyrus cheese it. So Kyrus has this amazing ability to apply poisons to the enemy and then extend the duration of that poison. And um, poisons hurt a lot, guys. So if you guys are struggling in Abyss, Kyrus is the easiest way to clear P hard PvE content that's out of your league quickly. So useless in PvP, but in PvE, you want to clear Abyss and get those awesome rewards early on to really accelerate your progression. Kyrus is the answer to all your problems. Just make sure that the level you bring her to is actually susceptible to poison. But if they are, basically she's an I win button. Now, number eight, a lot of you guys probably have this build. Number eight and number seven are kind of in the same boat. Taranor Guard. He is kind of, um, well, 100% useless in PvP. In PvE, general PvE, he's sometimes used on, like, CR pushing meme teams because of the way his dual attack works. But the main reason Taranor Guard is crucial is because of Wyvern. Wyvern 13 is the most important thing you do in this game. And basically, if you are playing this game seriously as an end game player, 95% of you playing this game is actually just turning on auto repeat in Wyvern and putting the phone down. Now, Tyrant Regard is a three star unit and is probably one of the best Wyvern heroes in the game, although there is some RNG with his decreased defense not hitting. But again, it takes no MOLA, so it's not a big deal. So Taranor Guard is a must-have unless you happen to have a bunch of five-star units that are great at Wyvern and you're willing to mola them like Luluka, Sigrid, Chloe, whatever it is. Now, number seven is the exact same story. Alexa, not too great in anything, although her S2, because it has poison, is good overall. But um, useless in PvP again, but an absolute Wyvern destroyer. Um, back then, people used to turn off her skills and just DDJ people because her S1 hits twice. Nowadays, because of the debuff requirement, a lot of people keep her skills on because these poisons really simplify keeping three debuffs on the Wyvern. 
but Alexa is amazing at Wyvern 13. She's on my Wyvern 13 team and her gear requirements are actually quite low. So that's number seven on my list. And now let's get into some more fun stuff. Number six, MRSA. So MRSA, I've never used her in PvE, but I imagine she's pretty good. But in PvP, she's pretty beastly, especially if you set her up with the right team and put her on Moonlight Dreamblade. Like a MRSA Acar team, you're going to have a real problem hitting her. And honestly, you don't even need Acar because with a max limit broken MLDB, she still has a 70% chance to dodge. And this thing has a huge multiplier. Her S3 can easily one-shot anything but the tankiest of heroes. And her speed is pretty fast. I will say that um, I have seen Mercer's easily one-shot my ML Ken. No deep break. Like, uh, if they have attack buff, they're gonna give you. And every time she dodges, the cooldown of her S3 goes down more and more. The one downside to her is that, again, evasion is kind of RNG. I've had games where I'm like, oh, I'm probably going to lose this Mercer, and then my character just randomly crits her and she drops dead in one hit. So kind of RNG-ish, but it's probably one of the most viable PvP three stars in the game that's used even at the highest levels. Now, number five, and disclaimer here, the top five are all going to be specialty change heroes, and that should really come as no surprise to any of you because the SC heroes are going to be better. But number five is Ruzid. Now Ruzid doesn't really show up that much in top top tier PvP, but he will get you to champion at least. Um, the thing is that he has a speed imprint which is fantastic. He's quite fast himself with his awakenings and his specialty tree. It's much higher than 106, don't worry about it. And um, his S3 gives everyone a pretty decent CR push and also gives them increased speed. So they start turn cycling really fast. There's really nothing too Ruzid other than that CR push, but he's probably one of the easiest to build and best cleave initiators in the early game. Later on, you're going to start initiating with things like Athletica or Basar or Oxlots or something, but until you have those, Ruzid is an excellent choice, so I would put him at number five on my list. Now, number four, she's an absolute beast. Now, in PvE, she's great, but in PvP, she's even better. So, remember how I said that our three-star unit's viable at the top tier? Falconer Clurry is a regular, regular pick in Champion RTA, and even in Legend RTA. Um, this S3 is ridiculous. It does have the weak down to having a ridiculously long cooldown, but she actually turn cycles very fast with her specialty tree. So she has a 100% chance to dispel all buffs, and it also provokes and defense breaks for two turns. This is game breaking. You can take someone completely out of the fight for two turns and also make them incredibly squishy with the defense break, and it does not suffer from elemental disadvantage because it's not an attack. So she can even do this to fire units even though she's earth and it won't miss. So that's amazing. Her S1 is just a basic attack, but the thing is it increases her combat readiness and um, I don't want to open up her specialty tree, but basically I think it boosts up the combat readiness of her teammates as well. So she actually is much faster than she looks because she's constantly boosting up her own CR and everyone's else CR and getting a bunch of turns. So even though this is a five turn cooldown, it feels like a lot less because sometimes she's taking like two turns for every turn you take. But Falconer Clurry is definitely a top, top tier unit despite being a three star grade. Now let's go to number three, Adventurer Roz. Actually one of my favorite units at the moment the regular Roz was a piece of crap, but with the new specialty change, he actually sees a lot of play at the champion level. I'm sure he's seen at the legend tier level. He is a very solid knight, especially when paired with high DPS bruisers. His kit is just absurd. His S1 has a dispel. His S2 has one-shot potential, 
because it triggers a dual attack from an ally with the highest attack and it doesn't say it here but it potentially defense breaks at a 60 percent rate and the soul burn only costs 10 souls and he can spam it every single turn so he is a knight that really increases your team's damage potential his s3 is equally amazing because it heals him but more importantly it gives your entire team defense buff which is one of the most important buffs in the game in end game pvp in pve he's also really good like a lot of people use him in hell raid if you have something like specter tenebria or any other hard hitting dps like luna or something he pairs very well with them because he essentially doubles their dps or more depending on if you have the souls or not so adventurer raz to me is a must build he takes no molas and he's great in pve he's great in pvp just build this guy he's an absolute monster now number two everyone knows commander larina if you watch some other guys on youtube they'll say this is probably the best unit to build for newbie players and they're right so for pvp she's pretty worthless i'd say don't even bother using her for pvp she's terrible but in pve she will carry you through 100 percent of the content in the game when i got stuck on abyss 90 uh, back when that was hard i built commander larina and i beat it in one try she's that good her skills look pretty basic right um she just attacks with her s1 her s2 her attack goes up every time she attacks and her S3 is just another basic attack. There are some keys to Commander Lorena though. Number one, her S2, when you max skill up, makes her hit really hard with her basic attacks. Um, it also, let, her S1 lets her turn cycle really fast because she's getting CR for it. But most importantly, her moves do not have debuffs. It might not be clear to you as a beginner why this is important, a lot of the abyss bosses and some of the hell raid bosses have mechanics that punish you if you debuff them and commander larina along with luna are the best dpsers that don't have to worry about that mechanic so when you're fighting that abyss boss where if you debuff them they counter you just bring commander larina and the fight suddenly becomes trivial so i think commander larina is a must build to get you through that early game or even mid game end game pve content and um if you're not struggling with that content anyway i guess you could skip her but otherwise she's gonna make your pve life so much easier now number one is not going to be a surprise to any of you who have been following my channel for a while angelic montmorency she is one of the best units in the game in my opinion and i think if she was a five star no one would question it if this hero never existed and they released her as a five star i think people would say wow this hero is freaking broken why is she so good um her specialty tree is ridiculous so you know back in the day before a momo existed people always said you need to reroll until you get angelica it's really a momo is so much better than angelica in every single way she has a constant cleanse that cleanses one or two debuffs from your team on a two turn cooldown. If you have Rod, her healing output is actually insane. Her S2 is a I mean her S3 is a huge heal, dispels two debuffs, increases her combat readiness by 50%, and gives the target immunity. And if you soul burn it, granted it's an expensive soul burn, but if you soul burn it, it's it affects the entire team so it's like a full team heal plus um immunity it's basically it turns into angelica's s3 um except even better so in pvp she's pretty godly i'd say in top tier rta she doesn't show up that much but in top tier guild wars regular arena whatever you can use her and get away with it if you followed my channel you know for a long time she was my only soul weaver because i felt no reason to build another one because she was so good um, i'd say the only place she doesn't really excel at is top tier rta everything else she's like s tier in pve she's definite definite s tier she's a staple in wyvern teams she's a staple in everyone's hell raid teams she's a staple in abyss because a lot of the hardest pve content in the game guys revolves around bosses that are constantly debuffing your team and no one cycles and cleanses faster than a momo
So to me, this is a hero that everyone should have built no matter what. She's just that good. And um, that's my top 10 list. So if you um, disagree with me, that's fine. You can uh, leave a comment below, whatever, and uh, share your own opinions. But these are the top 10 three-star units, F2P, that I think are the best ones in the game all the way up to end game content. Anyways, thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe to see more guides and top 10 lists and what have you. And uh, till next time, peace out everyone.